Hi, my name is Cheryl Hershey. I have always had a tremendous interest in the paranormal. I don't know why, I guess I was just born that way. Um, little things have happened throughout my life, but I, I found that when I talked about them, nobody believed me, so I just tried to forget about it, didn't talk to people about it. And then when my husband and I got married, we went up to Whistler, British Columbia for our honeymoon. And I have type one diabetes. I've had it for almost 50 years. And in the middle of the night, I woke up and I was having a horrendous insulin reaction where your blood sugar gets very low, your brain starts to shut down. And I, made it out of bed and walked into the kitchen kind of stumbling against the walls and I looked for anything with sugar in it and I couldn't find anything so I just sat down on the floor and waited to die and all of a sudden I heard a voice saying here eat this and I didn't see a face, but I saw a, a hand, a very dark hand, and it was a man's voice, and he tossed a muffin to me. Well, when you have low blood sugar, you get very, very mean. And so I cussed this person up one side and down the other, calling him every name in the books because he had thrown the muffin to me. And then I couldn't open it. So, Finally, he said, in kind of an irritated voice, just open it with your teeth. So I did, and I took the plastic off, and I ate the muffin, and then it took a while for my blood sugar to come back up. And when it finally did, so that I could think again, I, I thought, oh no, that had to have been my husband. That had to have been Gary, and I have just called him every nasty name in the books. So I went back into the bedroom, and he was asleep, and I woke him up and apologized and said, Gary, I'm so sorry for what I said to you. And he said, what are you talking about? And it hadn't been him. He had not been awake. So in the morning, we went out to where I had been sitting, and there was indeed a muffin wrapper out there. And we hadn't brought any muffins with us. So some people might have said, well, it's because you had low blood sugar, you didn't know what you were hearing, but I couldn't have created that muffin wrapper. So that convinced Gary that some odd things really do happen. The most significant paranormal thing that has ever happened to me in my life and there have been other people around, at least for parts of it. I went to the Oregon Ghost Conference uh, three years ago, I think it was, with a friend of mine. And one of the things that we did was to go on a ghost, a ghost hunt. I actually hate that term. But we went on a ghost hunt up in the attic of the Bridge Tender Tavern, a place in Seaside, Oregon, which is noted for being haunted. Well, I didn't see anything up there while I was there, but there was, uh, there was somebody taking photographs and there was just one photograph out of all of the ones that were taken that night and it showed a light going straight into me and then with fingers off going, going into the wall in front of me. I didn't, I didn't see that picture for a day or two, so I didn't know that had happened. But when my friend and I went back to our hotel room, I had a phonetic generator. Usually these things just give out garbage. But we turned it on and something started talking to us intelligibly. It would answer the questions that we were asking. It knew what color our clothes were. Um, I got up, it was very late, it was like four o'clock in the morning by then, and it was getting cold, and so I got up and turned the fireplace on, and it said heater. And then, kind of funny, later on, the toilet overflowed, and it said flood. 
And it was, I can't even remember all of the things that, that went back and forth, but finally my friend got angry. At, and she, she said to the spirit, look, we didn't invite you here. It's, it's late, we're cold, we're tired. You need to go back to where you came from. And the phonetic generator said, understand, rest, leave. And then I turned the, the phonetic generator off. And then it said something out loud that we both heard. We couldn't tell exactly what the word was, but it was very distinctly a disembodied voice. Now, I have been back to that same bar many times because that, that incident led me to write a novel called The, the Seaside Agency. Hasn't been published yet, but I hope it will be soon. And it has gotten to where, not every time, but generally, if I go into that bar and sit down, the spirit, whose name is Lena, will come and, and talk with me. She gives me hugs that I can feel. I know she's there. And one day I was writing in this bar. I have a much easier time writing when I am in that location. So I'd been there most of the day typing away and she was, you know, giving me a funny word now and then. And I finally said, Lena, can you just prove to me that you're real? Like move something on the table or touch me so that I can really feel it. And I waited, nothing happened. So about half an hour later, I said the same thing. And she said, I'm trying. So I waited probably another half an hour and I had somewhere to go. So I packed up my computer and I left the bar and was walking down the main street of Seaside. And all of a sudden, I felt the fingernails in my hair. It grabbed my hair and pulled my head back like that stopped me dead in my tracks. My first instinct was to look and see if, if there was a big bird that had grabbed my hair, or were there branches from a tree that I had gotten tangled with. There was nothing, there was no bird. I was nowhere near any tree, there was not a person around. So she finally figured out how to touch me so that I could very, very distinctly feel it. And I had to laugh and say, well, you know, I did tell you, you could touch me. I just didn't think it would be that hard. And now you have to go back. You can't follow me. So I'm going to be going back down to Seaside again in a couple of weekends and uh, taking one of my daughters with me. And I hope to, excuse me, I hope to see Lena there again. Um, this is something that, that I found interesting during the Seahawks game, I think it was two weeks ago, I was sitting in the back living room. My husband was sitting in the front living room and he was really getting mad at the Seahawks and he was yelling and carrying on, which made me upset because I don't like yelling. And all of a sudden, we both heard a crash in the kitchen, which is between the two living rooms. You could, you could hear metal clanging and glass breaking, and we both got up and ran into the kitchen, and there was nothing out of place. I looked through all the china cupboards, I looked through all the kitchen cabinets, nothing was out of place, nothing had fallen, nothing was broken. I thought it was paranormal. Um, I didn't know exactly how, um, but I had had a few other strange it incidents occur to me, and I kind of wondered whether, whether it was me, whether something in me was causing this ruckus. And I went to a wonderful paranormal boot camp in Port Gamble the other weekend, and they talked about poltergeist agents and said, that around people who have this, this energy, and that's what it is. It's not actually a paranormal thing. It's, it's a way that a person 
projects energy from their, from their own body. And they explained it very nicely as having an internal snit fit. <laughs> but um, they said, yes, that's, that's probably what it was. And, and the reason it fit was because I have a history of having computers start on fire while I'm using them. That's happened to me twice. I've also had a 10 key calculator start on fire and these were not plugged into the same locations each time. So um, <laughs> I, I guess I, I just have that ability to have internal snit fits. <laughs> I really want people to understand that our little human brains only understand just so much. The science that we've developed, it's so new and it's changing all of the time. So just because somebody tells you that something couldn't have happened doesn't mean it didn't. We're learning all the time and I hope that people will get past having to have other people believe them. Um, I come from a professional background. Most people in my situation probably wouldn't stand and sit in front of a camera and say these things for fear of hurting their reputations. But I'm old enough that I really don't care. And the truth of the matter is there are unexplained things all around us. And if you just sit quietly, you will hear them and you will see them even if you can't explain them.